Hey everyone, happy Sunday. Welcome to Church Online uh, for today. My name is James Beck. I'm a ministry intern here at St. Matt's and it's good to be here with you today. I'd like to extend a huge welcome if you're new to. We love having visitors and if you um, have any questions or if you would like to be connected, please click on the communication card right at the top so we can be in touch with you throughout this week. Also, let us know that you're worshipping uh, with us tonight. Uh, by typing hello on the chat bar on the right. Now, we're starting a brand new series focusing on our church's vision, seeing lives transformed through the grace of Jesus Christ. Baz will be preaching to us about a man called Zacchaeus, who was a wealthy, greedy tax collector who was revolutionized by the saving grace of Jesus and became a follower of him. During the last uh, few months, we have seen the snapshots also of how many church members are doing COVID. And today we have Logan and Val Ritchie uh, talking about uh, what's going on in their lives as well. But before that, I'm going to pray and then we're going to sing. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can um, come together uh, for church today. I pray that um, it's been awesome to see um, many lives transformed because of your grace, Lord. Um, I pray that we'll have open hearts and open minds as we hear uh, the word. And just thank you uh, for this time that we can be together as well. Amen. Now let's go and sing uh, to our glorious God.
Aye. Our Bible reading this morning comes from Luke chapter 19. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he's gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I'll pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Well, good day, everybody. Uh, welcome to Church Gain. And uh, I just want to say this is possibly our last time uh, doing church this way. And I wanted to do a big shout out to all those behind the camera and thank them for all their work over the last uh, months in preparing church for online church. So we're hoping, we're praying that we are back live in the buildings from next Sunday. And uh, we do have our hand on the eject button just in case. Uh, tune in to the very end of this service. I'll come back with some announcements on some of the things you need to know in order for us to be back live. Well, have you ever heard of the story of Angola Prison in Louisiana? It was known as the bloodiest prison in America, the Alcatraz of the South. Uh, Angola is the largest maximum security prison in the United States. It has 1,800 staff, 6,300 prisoners, a large portion of whom are on death row. It's infamous for its harsh working environments, its brutal violence. It occupies 18,000 acres. That's larger than Manhattan. It's infamous uh, for its brutal uh, violence and hard work. It's been in the lots of films, including The Green Mile, so you might know a little bit about it. And uh, in the 90s, there it was so brutal a place that there are th over 3,000 assaults on inmates and prison guards a year. Then in 1995, a Christian man by the name of Burl Kane was offered the job as the warden, which he took on the condition that they let him do it his way. Now, he must have thought the place was heaven because today you can do tours of this prison. Yes, only in America, it's one of those categories, tours of an active prison. But there are Bible verses everywhere as you go around and there are Bible studies in the prison every day. There are multiple chapels. There are theological degrees for inmates. Um, the late Ravi Zacharias did a tour of, of that place and he marveled, saying, former gangsters are now gangs of pastors. One lifer told Ravi, I'm in here for life. I'm not looking to get out. But if this is what it took for me to come, that is to come into a physical prison, in order to be freed from the prison inside, then I'm okay with that. Wow. Angola prison has actually been a place where hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of inmates have been transformed by Jesus Christ. You don't have to be in prison to experience or to need deep change. COVID has been a huge change in our world, hasn't it? We're suffering medically, financially, mentally, socially, uh, nationally, globally. It, we know all of this. Have you ever seen anything bigger in its impact on the world than COVID? Well, the answer is yes, you have. If you think COVID's been big, then the gospel of Jesus Christ to transform the world has been a, a huge thing for 2,000 years for good. The gospel of Jesus Christ has transformed prisons, it's birthed countless justice movements, charities, hospices, schools and universities. Uh, it started the union movement and the social welfare uh, movement. Uh, in Australia, AMP and the Smith family were started by Christians to care for those in need in Australia. 
The Guinness family are a Christian family. They started Guinness Beer as a low alcohol alternative to address the problems with alcoholism. And the list of the impact of Christianity could go on and on and on. And whilst it's fair to say Christianity has done some wicked things, our faith does criticise us for doing so. So you don't have to be in prison to need or to experience deep change. Well, from today we start a new series about our mission to see lives transformed through the grace of Jesus Christ. COVID's nothing compared to what we're about to see over the next three weeks. So three sermons about deep transformation. First, about the transformation of individuals, then churches, and then cities and the world. Today, an individual, a powerful, rich, career-focused man, he would have slotted in well on the North Shore, and yet he was utterly revolutionised by Jesus. Zacchaeus was a first century tax collector. This means he was rich, really rich. And as a chief tax collector, he was up to the top of the food chain. It also means he would have had plenty of connections, Roman connections, which made this Jewish man a traitor, collecting exorbitant taxes from his countrymen to give it over to the Roman overlords. Further, it meant that he was an outcast. Uh, the standard religious teaching of the day was not to mix with or even eat with people like this guy. So there would have been a time in Zacchaeus' life when he were, was working out, what am I going to do in life? What am I going to pursue? And in that moment, he put riches ahead of friends. He set his heart on money instead of on God. And he put himself ahead of friends and nation. You can see why his heart needed to change. Well, Zacchaeus' story comes for us in Luke 19. Now, Zacchaeus, that's a good Jewish name. He is a person who can proudly trace his ancestry nearly 1,800 years to the nation's founder of Abraham. Zacchaeus can claim all the spiritual benefits of being a Jew, one of the chosen nation, but as we said, he's a traitor to all of that. In verse 2, he's described as a chief tax collector and was wealthy. The way the Roman tax system worked was that he would have been under contract from the Roman occupiers to extract taxes from his countrymen. And as a chief, chief ta tax collector, he would have had employees doing all that work for him and he would have sat at the top of this system of corruption and greed. He would have been the person people love to hate. In addition, you've got to understand that in the ancient world, tax collectors were hated much more than we hate our own government taxes because you, know, you weren't just taxed 37, 45 cents in the denarii. The system, as Zacchaeus later admits, was open to corruption. Extortion and standover tactics were common and uh, they would uh, take what they could from you to pay off the contract and then more to get rich for themselves. Well, Zacchaeus would have been thoroughly despised by everyone. Today, however, he has another problem. He's heard somehow that Jesus is coming through town. This would have been his only chance to come close to holiness. And so in verse 3, he went for a look. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. Just imagine it. A huge crowd there that day, as always. Uh, something approximating a royal visit. And little old Zacchaeus is finally one among them, an equal at last, in with them. It's just that he's too short. Imagine the crowd's reaction when he's right there beside them. I can imagine a discreet elbow, a shove in the back stepping on his toes. Oh, sorry, Zacchaeus, didn't see you there. I mean, you're so short and all. And what did he do? Well, he ran ahead and climbed a tree. It's really quite unusual because you don't see dignified, wealthy men climb up trees, especially in the first century when you'd have to pick up your robe, expose your skin, which you don't do, uh, in order to run. So it's got to say a lot for Zacchaeus's opinion of Jesus that a man of his stature would run and climb trees and bare his legs and leave the bodyguards behind. Jesus really must be 
something worth seeing. Really, really must be someone worth being humbled over. A man who can bring the divine just down to a few metres. So desperate old Zacchaeus went for a look up a tree. And he's in for a stunning shock. Verse 5. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he's gone to be the guest of a sinner. Reading that makes me wonder, how did Jesus know his name? Maybe it's supernatural knowledge or maybe he heard from the crowd as they mumbled his name and stepped on his toes. I mean, who knows, it doesn't really matter, I suppose. The point is where conventional theology taught that Zacchaeus would be the last person on God's guest list. Jesus has zeroed in on him and in the space of a dozen words shown stunning grace and kindness. Zacchaeus went for a look and through one gracious act by Jesus, he ended up with the Son of God as a dinner guest. It's spectacular. The crowd also went for a look that day, didn't they? But they didn't like what they saw. They began to grumble. He's gone to be the guest of a sinner. Obviously, you can see what's going on inside their hearts. They see themselves as more righteous, better people than Zacchaeus, and so much more worthy of God and Jesus' attention. And yet when they witness this compassion and grace by Jesus on this spiritually distant, sinful man, they commit them, themselves one of the most, well, worst sins of Jewish thought. They grumbled, just like the ancients did in the wilderness. It's their judgmentalism that has led them to be in the very state they think Zacchaeus is, is in, far from God. So two groups went for a look that day. One, a desperate sinner, alienated from God, prepared to humiliate himself before whole crowds. The other, a self-righteous bunch, proudly confident, blind to their own self-righteousness and distance from God. Both went for a look that day, but only one humbled himself and found God. The others simply saw a holy man mixing with the wrong people. They were just metres away in that crowd, but they may as well have been on Mars. It's to the former, it's to the desperate types that Jesus comes. You see, you don't need to be in prison to need deep change. But what is it going to take before we humble ourselves before the Son of God? I tell you, COVID's not doing it. The difference between Zacchaeus and the crowds was not their need for God, but their view of themselves. You see, it's how you perceive yourself that determines how you approach Jesus. And so the application at this point is humble yourself before God. Humble yourself. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus' look has become a dinner date with the Son of God and things keep snowballing from there because dinner next becomes a tax return. Verse 8. But Zacchaeus stood up and said, Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor and if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I'll pay back four times the amount. What a revolution in this man's life. He was lost. I mean, he had everything, but he was lost and he knew it. He, he, and now Jesus has come to him and in response, everything has turned upside down in his life. Here and now, I give half my possessions to the poor. I mean, what a statement. I'll pay back four times the amount. What a tax return. What a difference being in relationship with God makes. Doesn't it make you wish that everyone in the tax department became a Christian? But then that thought only just betrays our own greedy hearts, doesn't it? You see, we don't have to be in prison to experience or to even need deep change from Jesus. So over the space of dinner, 
Zacchaeus has learned that his life, that life itself, is not about the pursuit of money. In fact, this tax return attests to a spiritual re uh, revolution in his life. Jesus gives the interpretation of the whole event, verse 9. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come into this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Now that expression, Son of Man, is Jesus' way of referring to himself. This tax return, Jesus explains, is evidence of a major spiritual transformation. Zacchaeus is no longer lost from God. His heart is no longer pursuing money or career. It's pursuing Jesus. And now through the grace of Jesus Christ, he's been saved and brought near. And that's why Jesus came, to seek and to save the lost like Zacchaeus. All of the lost, any of them, like you and me. And this is what the cross is about. His purpose was to die for sin, to bring the distant near. Contrary to ancient and even modern expectations, Jesus didn't come for the self-righteous, the people who think they've got it all together. He came for for those who look differently at Jesus, to those who look at him desperately. Friends, you don't have to be in prison to experience deep change, but we all need it. And Jesus is the one who shows grace to transform our lives for good.
It's time uh, for confession, and this is a very important thing to do as Christians, because we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. When Zacchaeus met Jesus, he realized how sinful he is. So he decided to put his trust in Jesus, and he was met with forgiveness and grace. The Bible tells us not to hide our sin from God, but to confess and to repent of our sinful actions so that we can be forgiven and be transformed through the boundless grace. The words will be on the screen, so let us uh, confess together. Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have often gone our own way and rejected your will for our lives. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son, who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us, and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you and to please you in every way. For the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we've got Logan and Val Ritchie with us this morning from the St. Matt's 8.30 service. Welcome to you both. It's great to have you here. I think it's our last, or at least a planned, uh, <laughs> snapshot uh, for this arrangement. Tell us, how has COVID been treating you both? Oh, pretty good. I think we've uh, got out and around and seen people under the, the carer's clause, and that's been great seeing people in their own homes. Uh, but we can't see everyone. How about you? Well, we've, we've done okay, actually. We've um, made a lot of 
contacts with people who we would not normally on a weekly basis uh, have contact with. We've also seen a lot of our family in Sydney and grandchildren. Haven't been able to see our London family or our Adelaide family, but that's the ups and downs of COVID. Um, but we've coped pretty well, kept well, kept fit, walked, and um, life's been okay. And been tremendous servants. Uh, uh, heading up our pastoral care team, you've really uh, served a lot of people uh, very well, so we thank you for that. Uh, next week, we hope to be back in the building live as church. How are you both feeling about that? How, how do you think people are feeling about that prospect? Well, I hope they're looking forward to coming back. Um, <laughs> quite a few have expressed they're looking forward to yeah. that, yeah. but they not uh, they know it's going to be a little bit different and uh, they're not sure what that really means at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to coming back. Um, I'll need to get my act together um, a bit more on a Sunday morning to be here by 10 past eight, but it will be good, it will be different. I'm also looking forward to singing whenever that happens yeah. and that probably won't be initially, but it's good to meet together. That's what we're designed to do, live in community and it'll be good to be back. Yeah, and it's been good to have the fellowship of church and the teaching and the input mm. over the video. Yes. Uh, but yes, to see each other again, I yeah. think, is one of the beaut things that, that yeah. we're looking yeah, forward sure. to. Yeah, yeah yes. that's, that's exactly right. Um, what do you think, uh, how, how would you say, God, what has God been teaching you? What's been the challenge in, in the last months? What's been the, the, the beautiful stretch for your faith? Well, um, I, I found my faith just as strong if not stronger because faith, my Christian life doesn't a, depend on being in a church building. Um, I think um, I've been able to have more time with people. We've been able to visit. Um, we've had the privilege of praying with people and reading the Bible, um, encouraging them and they've encouraged us. But I think we need to remember that um, the Christian life is not about one service on a Sunday. It's at Matt's as good as that is. It's a seven day a week faith mm. and, and my faith in Jesus is seven days a week. So I, I just, my faith has been strong. My prayer list has grown um, <laughs> because there've been so many needs here. Um, well, in the community, but particularly at St. Matt's, there's been quite a few needs. One of the challenges, the, the sad things, has been that we have not been able to go to some funerals yeah. of good friends yeah. because of the limitations. That's been sad. But God knows the end from the beginning and um, part of being a Christian is just trusting him for the outcome. Mm, terrific. Logan, how about for you? Oh, look, uh, I guess everybody has ups and downs in life and this is one of these times in, in life in the community which has been quite challenging for many. Um, I've, I'm fairly comfortable, it's just the case. A lot of our plans God has disposed of this year. Mm. They're, not, they're not happening and they might not happen next year and that's okay. I've mm. learned to come to terms with all that. Yeah, he's in control. He knows what he's yeah. doing. Yeah. 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 It'd be nice to know. But yeah, we it would be nice to know. But, uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of people say, so what do you think will happen next week? Will it spread? And I think, well, you know what? Here's today and tomorrow is just, just over the horizon. Mm. And there's, there's a lot of unknowns mm. and um, it's easier. Faith in, in, in Jesus is easier in good times than it is in tough times. Mm. And we have to learn to trust him because mm. that's all we can do at the moment. We don't know what's ahead, but mm. for a Christian, we know who holds the future, <laughs> but we don't know what the future holds. That's beautiful. And uh, look, thanks to you both for ministering to us this way today, but um, the prayer list has grown stronger, uh, gone longer. How good is yeah. that? Yeah. And uh, look, we thank you for your ministry to us just now, but also uh, in your pastoral care work. So mm. thank you for, for this. Thanks, Pat. Ple pleasure.
Will you join me as we continue in prayer? Heavenly Father, God of the nations, Lord of hosts, we pray for our broken and divided world. In this time of heightened anxiety and distress, we lift up to you the coronavirus situation around the globe. In your mercy, please halt the spread of this disease and grant healing and comfort to those afflicted. We ask you to preserve life. Protect those who work in medical fields from any infection and harm as they care for the sick and seek to find a vaccine and cure. Bless leaders around the world with your wisdom as they make decisions about the people under their care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, we give you thanks for our mission partners both here and around the world. Please strengthen them for the work you've prepared in advance for them to do. Fill them with all joy and peace in believing, so that in both word and deed they would be mighty ambassadors for Christ. We pray for creativity as they seek to share the gospel during this period where their regular opportunities may be impaired or different. And we ask that by your spirit you would open the hearts and minds of people who they engage with and grow your heavenly kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Father, we pray for those we know who are hurting, for the sick, the grieving, and those looking for employment or are struggling for other reasons. For every situation, help them to both know and feel your presence with them. Bind up the brokenhearted, heal those who are unwell, and for those who mourn, give them your peace that transcends all understanding. Help us to comfort them, just as we have received comfort from you, the God of all comfort. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And finally, a prayer for St. Matt's. Glorious Father, transform us through the grace of Jesus Christ and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Bring us to mature faith so that we persevere in loving you with all our heart and love our neighbours as ourselves to your glory. We pray that being rooted and established in love, we may have power together with the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that we may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Well, I've got a few announcements and uh, they're big, so please, uh, if you'd pay attention and follow along. Uh, of course, you can get more detail from the electronic bulletin, which gets sent to everyone in our database on Thursdays. If you're not getting that, yeah, please contact the office. So, as I said a little earlier, this is our, our last of the streaming online in this way. We hope to be in church live from next Sunday. Um, and we've worked out how to do that in a COVID safe way, following all the regulations and so forth. I'm, I will admit we have one hand on the eject button just in case things blow up and the government say that's not uh, the way to go anymore. We will let you know that, but at this stage we think we can do it and comply with everything that is required of us. So um, what we need to do therefore is to make things so that we can comply. And that means we need a, a maximum of 100 per service. And that means we'll need to experiment with some changes in our times, particularly at the St. Matt's site. All Saints will continue or, or as per normal, but 8, 8 o'clock service will be 8.30, they know about that, 10 a.m. and 4.30, that's All Saints next week. St. Matt's, there'll be 8.15, so the 8.30 service comes forward to 8.15. Then the 10 o'clock service splits into two, so that'll be at 9.30 and 10.45. And the evening service splits into two from 5 and 6.30. Again, that'll be in the e-bulletin. We will also uh, live stream. Initially, we can do that with the technology we have from St. Matt's. We're going to look at expanding that. And so our morning and evening slots will be streamed. That is our plan uh, as we go from there. Now, check the website, uh, the two church websites for the details. And because we have to limit things to up to 100 persons per service, and because we have to contact trace, you will need to book into a service. So you can do that on the website and then you'll get a little ticket and you can bring that ticket on your phone or print it off and you can check in in a contactless way. So that's pretty good. Uh, we will also have people socially distancing all of that and some cleaning and so forth. So again, check the website, check the e-bulletin for all the details on that. Uh, we can't fit the kids at St. Matt's 10 a.m. service, which again is 9.30 now, uh, on site at the same time. So we'll need to drop them at OLPS before. Uh, so don't bring them here, take them to OLPS and then walk up the hill. And of course, you're gonna need time uh, to allow for that. Next set of announcements, the merger meetings coming up on the 9th of August. They'll be for each church at All Saints. It'll be 11.15 after the morning service. And for some mats, it'll be at two o'clock uh, in the afternoon. So just go to your respective sites there. And uh, if you're a member of the 4.30 service, that means that all saints, you can choose either one to go to. It's a big, big moment in the life of our church. And I want to encourage you to be there. Uh, and we will spell out the shape of our partnership as it moves into merger. And if we're in on the same page, we can recommend to the parish council who have that vote uh, that we go ahead with that. So it's a big, big thing and uh, we'll update you on at the time. Please, please come. The last thing to inform you about is John Dixon is coming uh, to St. Matt's and All Saints in August. Uh, he'll be at All Saints at the 10 a.m. service and at St. Matt's evening services, the two there. Uh, he'll be here live for three weeks, unless of course the government should make us stay online. And then after that, he'll run a Life of Jesus course. We also have him coming back later in the year, in October or so. So the other services that he's not appearing at, he'll be going to those ones then. But if you have a friend who wants to come and hear him, you need to book in via the website and do it now and find the right service for that. So it's really good. Lots to be praying about. Lots happening in the life of our church. August is a big month. Please, please check in on the website and the e-bulletin for all those details. And we'll see you live next Sunday. Thanks, Baz, uh, for the announcements. Now, we've reached the end of our service, and it's been great to be with you uh, this Sunday. It's been super encouraging to see uh, Logan and Val uh, spend, and they're also spending time in God's Word. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save the lost. Jesus is the only one who is able to save us and transforming our lives all the time. We've seen this through uh, the story of Zacchaeus today. And as we continue in the sermon series, looking into our church's mission, I want you guys to think about someone you can invite to church as John Dixon uh, is coming or even just any week in church as well. 
invite them to come along to see the opportunity and also to hear how their life can be transformed through the grace of Jesus Christ. It's been great to do our church with you um, this Sunday and we hope you have a great week and we'll see you next Sunday.